Let's talk about different methods of selecting areas of data or ranges of data within a spreadsheet. It could be rows, it could be columns, such that we could then apply formatting changes in terms of how uh, or the style of the text or the color of the text or the formatting of the values within a spreadsheet. Now, we've got several different uh, ways to do this. Uh, we're going to look at this sample spreadsheet here, ABC Company Compensation and Bonus Worksheet. Use this as our example. Now, wherever we click, I'm going to click on Fred Sander here on the employee column, column A. Whichever cell you click on is your active cell. And with a cell selected or a range selected, here's a range, more than one cell adjacent. With a cell or range selected, when you go to apply a formatting change from an icon on your ribbon, it will apply that change to the cell that you've selected and the text contained within that cell. Say, for example, I want to make Fred's name bold. I click the bold icon and his name becomes bold. If I want to apply a, an underline, I click the underline icon. Now his name is both bolded and underlined. Um, I don't think I necessarily want to do that because I want to make sure all the employee names appear consistently in the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and use my undo arrow in my quick access toolbar to take it back to the way it was before. Now, say I want to go ahead and center. I want to center all the employee names in my spreadsheet. I can click and drag the range that contains their names and then click on the center icon. Now notice it's already orange, which means that that feature is already turned on, but it's already turned on just simply for the heading, employee. So if I click it, and then I click it again, it will ensure that everything in that column is centered. But only in the columns contained within the range that I selected. If I then move down to row 11 here, which was my first blank row, and I type in a name and hit enter, notice that that next name does not take on the formatting attributes of the rows above it. All right, so we might want to think in terms of is our spreadsheet going to grow in size? Maybe we want to select a larger area. So let me step back again, take the spreadsheet back to the way it was. Maybe I want to click and drag and go down, I don't know, maybe 25 rows and apply my center formatting from the alignment group of icons on my home tab of the ribbon. And it will then center and apply the center formatting for every cell within that range. But then again, if it grows beyond 25 rows, I'll have the same predicament. So let me step back again. Another option you have is to select the entire row. And you select the entire row by moving your cursor up to where the letter corresponding to the row is. You get the downward pointing arrow and you left click your mouse. That will select the entire column from top to bottom. If you then apply your preferred formatting, it will give that formatting and it will apply it to every cell all the way down to the bottom of your spreadsheet. So as you continue to add data, every name I plug in here will now be centered within that column. Okay, now let me go ahead and step back again. Now say you want to select more than one column. You don't have to do each column individually. You can move the cursor up over where the letter of the column is, you get your downward pointing arrow, hold in your left mouse button, and roll it over to the right. It now selects column B along with column A. I can now apply formatting to these columns. Maybe I want to make them, you know, bold. Or maybe I want to italicize them. I click on the italicize icon, and everything in those two columns is now italicized. I'm going to undo that. Now, what if I want to select columns that are not adjacent? For example, column A and column C. I can click column A. Column A is now selected. I can then hold the control key in on my keyboard. Holding the control key in, I can roll my mouse over to the column I'd like to include. In this case, column C, I click my left mouse button, and now columns A and C are selected not column B. I can now apply a formatting change. Maybe I'd like to change the color of the data or the text within these two columns only. 
And of course, you'll see here as a feature with Excel 2007, when you're presented with a group of options or selections, as you hover over your choices, you can see how they will apply themselves to your data in the background. So in this case, once I find a color I want, I click on it. It then applies it to the selected columns. Column B remains untouched. All right, let me undo that and go back. How about rows? Well, rows work the same way. Say I have this heading row here, which contains the headings, employee, department, pay grade, salary, and so on. I can click and drag across those cells, and then I can apply formatting changes. Say I want to give those headings a color. Maybe I want to make them blue. I click on them. They're all blue. Okay. Now I come out and say I want to add a column, column I. Maybe I want to put my, let's see here, 2007 bonus here. And as I type it in, I see, well, okay, look at that. It did take on the attributes of the column to the left. If you find that that doesn't happen, you can select, instead of selecting just the cells that you want to apply the formatting to, I can click on the row number two. I get my arrow, click on it. It selects the row all the way out to the right, to the end of the spreadsheet. I can then apply my formatting changes so I'll know that if or as I add additional columns, they will take on the formatting attributes so everything will look consistent across my spreadsheet. If I needed to uh, make a formatting change to my entire spreadsheet, well, this one's pretty small, so I can just simply click and drag the range. Or maybe I want to go a little bit farther down because I know there's going to be additional employee uh, rows of data here. I can then apply my formatting, desired formatting change. But say you know your spreadsheet's going to grow and you're not sure in which direction. It could grow out to the right horizontally. It could grow down vertically. Well, if you click on the little button to the left of column A and above row 1 at the upper left-hand corner of the body of the spreadsheet itself, click there. Notice how that applied a shading, and that selects your entire spreadsheet, every single cell in your spreadsheet. If I were now to apply a formatting change, maybe a font color, it would apply that to the entire spreadsheet. So anywhere I would, were to type, I would now have that formatting. And in this case, it's just a font color. Okay. Go back home again. All right, and let me undo what I've done here. Take it back to the color it was before. All right, now, other formatting we might want to apply to this spreadsheet are for the columns that contain numeric values, because not only are these numeric values, these should be formatted as if they were currency. The salary amount, the bonus amount, the gross amount, the new salary for 2007, all right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and give these currency formatting. Now, as before, I can just click and drag across the range that I'd like to apply the formatting to. In this case, I want to add a dollar symbol, and I want to add a decimal place with two decimal places. I can go a little bit further down and allow for growth, or I can select my entire column by clicking up where column D is. Now, if I also realize I want to do the same thing to columns E and F and also H, well, I can also hold in my control button and click column H. Or I can just simply, to keep it simple, select D through F. And there's an icon for this in the number group. There is a currency icon. If I click there, all right, now let's see what happened. All right, whenever you see these little pound symbol or number number symbols, that's telling you that the column is not wide enough to display the data. And because I clicked on the dollar or the number, the accounting of format symbol, that added a dollar symbol as well as a decimal place and two figures after the decimal. So it increased the width of the data. So I can come up here and I can widen my column to display the data. I can double click the little line in between the columns, or I can manually move the cursor up, look for that two-way arrow, and drag it outward to make it fit. 
Okay, so now I, I see what I'm looking at. I'm looking at currency values. These apply. And since I had selected the columns, if I come down, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 rows and I type in a number amount, it will give me the dollar symbol, it will give me the comma, the thousand separator, it will also give me the decimal place and the two zeros. All right, let me do the same thing for column H. So I'm going to click on column H all the way down. If I only select the values within the column here and I click on that accounting number format symbol, all right, once I add my next row, it does not give it the appropriate formatting. So you're better off clicking on the column heading or the column letter. It selects the column all the way down to the bottom and then apply that accounting number format. Okay, there you go. Hopefully this was helpful and gave you an idea on how to select columns, how to select rows, how to select ranges of data, and then use some of your formatting options up on your ribbon.